Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Michael Awadala. I graduated from the University of Cincinnati College of Medicine and I'm creating this video series to go over some very practical and uh, important aspects of patient care that I think are difficult to find good information for and specific information for either online or in textbooks. So today we're going to go over uh, how to write and dose TPN, uh, total parenteral nutrition for patients who can't take uh, food by mouth or uh, have any enteral feeding. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, let's get started here. We'll go over uh, kind of my thought process on uh, dosing and uh, writing for TPN. So first off to note, uh, TPN is going to have amino acids, dextrose, and lipids. Just the parenteral nutrition is going to have the amino acids and dextrose. So when we're dosing TPN, uh, two things to take into account are the patient's weight and uh, height. So we'll just say we've got a uh, 100 kilogram man that's uh, six feet tall. And then uh, when you're dosing the uh, the TPN, in terms of using the, the TPN versus just the amino acids and dextrose, the uh, uh, there's a national lipid shortage, so this uh, most patients will be on the parenteral nutrition, so no lipids for the first two weeks. And then if they need uh, TPN more than two weeks, uh, they'll, they'll have the lipids too. So uh, basic dosing. Um, Two things you need to think about, total calories and uh, the amount of protein. So for protein, you can use uh, 1.2 to 1.5 grams of amino acids per kilogram per day. So uh, for our guy, um, you can use the actual weight. A little bit better would be is to uh, would be to use the adjusted body weight, which I'll show you how to calculate that in a second. Um, but for now, we'll just say that the uh, the weight that we're using or the adjusted body weight is 100, ki 100 kilograms. For most patients, we'll use the 1.5, so that would end up being uh, 150 grams amino acids per day. And then uh, that's going to be a total of 600 kcals because uh, each gram of amino acids is 4 kcals. So now we also need dextrose and uh, the other thing that we want to know is that for total calories uh, we want to have um, either uh, 25 to 30 kcal per kilogram per day. So for most patients that are sick or in the ICU or hypermetabolic, you're going to want to use the 30. If it's a patient that's been on TPN for a while, maybe a little bit overweight and decent nutritional status, you can go more towards the 25. So for us, we're going to want to do the, um, uh, we'll do the 30. So that's going to be 3,000 kcals per day. It may seem like a lot, but a lot of these patients are sick and their bodies are working a lot. They're burning a lot of uh, a lot of energy, so it's reasonable. So the difference for the dextrose, you can subtract it out. You want to have uh, 2,400 kcals of dextrose. Now sugar is usually four um, four kcals per gram. Dextrose is 3.4. So to make up for that, all we do is uh, come over here and we do 2,400 divided by 3.4 equals uh, 706 grams and that's how we get it and uh, inevitably once you calculate this out um, using the 1.5 grams and the 30 kcals just with amino acids and dextrose you're going to get that about 20 percent of your calories are going to be from the uh, amino acids so that's uh, right there and then your dextrose 
it's going to be about 80 percent now when you're adding lipids in uh, the, uh, the way uh, it works with the hospital I'm at you can add lipids twice a week and it's 50 grams and for a lot of our patients uh, if it's a if it's someone that uh, has diabetes usually we'll just add that on top so they'll get extra calories on those two days uh, that way you're not adjusting the uh, the dexterous if, if it's long term and it was lip it were lipids every day you'd subtract the lipid calories out of the dexterous calories recalculate how many uh, grams of dexterous you want um, lipids are nine kcals per gram so that's 450 kcal uh, of the lipids so not too much extra there other things uh, you need to keep uh, in mind for uh, um, for the TPN are um, labs so you're gonna have uh, some labs twice weekly that's gonna be renal panel and lipids And then weekly, you're going to want CBC with diff, LFTs, and preobumin. Half life of preobumin is uh, two to three days. So, a good indication for TPN. You can also use the uh, albumin level uh, to help you out gauging the nutritional status. Uh, next thing for uh, uh, for adjusted body weight, which you want to use to dose the TPN, um, you actually need to know the actual weight. So we'll say uh, uh, we'll say actual is 100 kilograms, and then uh, you also use the ideal, which is based on uh, it's based on this formula. Man, it's uh, 106 pounds plus um, uh, plus five pounds per inch over five feet. So for this patient that we have, um, it's going to be uh, 160 plus five times uh, uh, 12 inches over five because we'll just say six feet tall. So that'll be um, uh, 166 uh, pounds, and then you divide by 2.2, gives you kilograms, and we have actual is 100, ideal, um, so then we'll have adjusted. And all it is is 25% of the way from here up to this value. So 25 uh, kilograms divided by 4, 6.4. So, or, or 6.2. So you just add that up and it'd be um, 81.25 kilograms. So we could, you could just say 80 kilograms when you're dosing the TPN for this, uh, for this guy. Um, and that'd be close enough. The uh, the other thing, uh, first day you dose the TPN, there's a standard bag that you run. Um, it's just one liter of a standard amount of uh, of amino acids and dextrose. And then after that, you can do the uh, full um, the full bag. Uh, when you're dosing the TPN, you might have to adjust the water. Um, usually, you'll be given about one and a half liters to uh, to two liters per day. Um, <clears throat> if it's two liters, it's going to be around 84 milliliters per hour, because you've got you've got 2,000 mLs divided by 24 it gives you about 84 ml mLs per hour. If it's one liter, you'll be at uh, 42. The other thing to talk about is the uh, for patients who are diabetic doing the insulin dosing. So when you start out, you want to do sliding scale insulin. Um, you could use regular, regular is what goes in the TPN. Uh, you can do it either every uh, four hours or every six hours. And then what you're going to do is uh, the first day, 
if the patient gets uh, 40 units of sliding scale, you could put 20 in the TPN and then they get the other 20 through their sliding scale insulin. Um, apparently 5 or 10 units of the insulin sticks to the uh, tubing, uh, the IV tubing, so they won't get all of this. They might actually end up just getting one, 10 units in, in the TPN and then their sliding scale might come out to around 30 units. Um, and then you can actually add more of that back and if you want get up to two-thirds of the uh, insulin in the TPN then leave one-third in the uh, sliding scale and if you have to err, err on having more in the sliding scale because you can't take that out of the TPN. So uh, that's all for this video and uh, hopefully uh, you enjoyed it and learned a lot and uh, we'll have another video uh, later.